My name is Fran Diogo. I'm a Puppy Educator Supervisor for Assistance Dogs Australia in the Sydney South area. So Assistance Dogs Australia has been around for 22 years this year. We uh, support people that have a range of disabilities. We started with the physical disability support program, so the dogs will actually perform physical tasks for the clients as well as uh, helping them break barriers socially, go out and about, be more uh, free and independent. We also have uh, a program for autism support, so for children and young adults in the autism spectrum. Uh, also a program for first responders uh, suffering from PTSD. Uh, and we have educational support dogs to help in school settings uh, with either kids that have suffered trauma or abuse or kids that have learning disabilities. Well, Bear, we had um, come to our home when he was eight weeks of age. He's a golden retriever, male. He's now oh, about 29 kilos, so he's quite a big boy. He's very loving, and yes, he's in puppy education. The puppy education has been so fabulous, being able to go to all the puppy classes that I have support at home. All the food is paid for, all the vet bills, you know, are paid for how to work with the puppies in the community, teaching them how to go on buses and trains, in shopping centres, travelators. It's so much fun and yeah, I'm learning every day. I would also say what joy it brings to the community when you're out. I mean, I'm so proud of Bear when I take him out. All the questions you're asked, like what's, what's he doing? Is he, um, you know, who will he be for? And just sharing the love, I guess. Just to be, to be a puppy educator, <sighs> yeah, I, I would just, yeah, I would recommend it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, my name is Yina, and this is Lulu. I've been a puppy educator for about three years now, and Lulu is my third puppy. I guess it's the it's the progress when you see when you watch them learn and develop skills. We are like a big family and, and it's a very, very rewarding journey. Learning can be fun and also by injecting fun into learning, it, it helps to develop skills in other areas in my life as well. I'm Fiona and I'm a puppy educator volunteer here in Assistance Dogs. I'm Talia and I'm also a puppy educator volunteer uh, with Co. This is Lord. Lord is about 10 months old now. We've had him since he was eight weeks old and he is obviously gorgeous, <laughs> which is just as well because sometimes life with Lord can be a little bit challenging. A lot of people don't realise that there's more than guide dogs as an assistance dog. So um, our dogs, the ones we raise, will go to people living with a physical disability or post-traumatic stress disorder, autism, and in some cases go to school for educational support so that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. Uh, another thing is people uh, sometimes think that these dogs don't get to play or have fun and you know don't get to be a, a normal dog to say but that's not even close to the truth yeah when they're working they're pretty focused but they love it they're always getting treats and love and all the attention always the center of attention and when they're at home it's just a ton more play and cuddles and, and running around and just being, being a young pup, yeah, being a dog. Chloe is one of our retired uh, broods. So she basically um, supported supported us with three beautiful litter of puppies. She had 19 puppies in total, three litters. Um, her first litter, the sea litter, is actually completing three years their birthday tomorrow. So they've all been placed with people that had uh, physical disabilities. She was selected to become a mum. We need to multiply this sort of puppy to have success in our program. So she's just one of many broods that we have. Um, and uh, now that she retired from her role, she's actually helping me because she's so well behaved and uh, such a calm influence. She actually helps me train the new volunteers. Uh, before they take their puppies. She's now just working with me, providing enrichment and guidance, I guess, in a way, to uh, the youngsters that work in our classes. So we have a range of volunteering opportunities working with the dogs. We have puppy educators who take them for the long journey of um, eight, from eight weeks of age to 15 months of age, uh, just socializing them out in the environment and providing them good home manners and 
also teaching them about being calm and confident and focusing on that handler. We have puppy carers who would help uh, support the educators by providing them with a short break. It could be a week or a few days uh, when the educator needs to go away or uh, are unable to stay with the puppy for extended hours. And we have uh, BMBers who look after the pups in advanced training here in our kennels um, and they are able to take them for the weekend just for relax and chill out and so we go through of course all they need to know about uh, t training the puppy at home training the puppy out and about so I guess yeah being available uh, having a backyard is I ideal but not essential there's a lot of apartment dwellers as well that can take the pups and exercise them outside and um, still give them the the training that they need uh, so I guess it's mostly Having the time, being able to learn, loving dogs and wanting to learn about dog psychology, dog training, and learning to have fun as well with them and provide them enrichment and, you know, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a mixed role, but it's yeah, a combination of skills there. <laughs> Before we actually started the puppy education, we had a dog for like a couple of weekends just to give us a bit of a taster. I always knew what a massive responsibility it would be looking after one of these dogs and I never took it lightly, but we loved it. It's been quite a journey to be honest. Toby, our son, is severely autistic. As you probably know, there's a spectrum and he's at the very severe end. Toby doesn't, he's non-verbal, he doesn't stop jumping, moving, running, and he was getting incredibly difficult to take out. He was a runner. He doesn't like me to hold onto his shirt or his hand or his arm. We had massive concerns about road safety, but holding on to this magic lead, we can go anywhere. Like, yeah, it's incredible. You know, for just going shopping, would be a nightmare. He would run, he would touch everything, he would lie on the floor, but we clip him onto Fox, he holds onto that lead, and the world's our oyster, we can go anywhere. Things that normal people can do every day for us is a challenge, but with Fox supporting our family, he's like the glue that keeps us all together. He's the love of our life, basically. A volunteer will have to be available. I guess the, the most precious commodity these days is time. When we don't have enough volunteers, unfortunately, we have to slow down on the breeding. Um, it's a big struggle. Sometimes uh, we might find sponsorships for the dogs, which is also quite important. It costs us $35,000 to sponsor a dog uh, through their training up to two years. But if we don't have the volunteers, we're kind of stuck. So we really need the community support for that.